In the maze of complexities that define the ongoing war in Ukraine, a shocking revelation has pierced through the fog of conflict. The infamous Wagner Group, a private military outfit, announced the capture of Lieutenant Colonel Roman Venevitin of the Russian Ground Forces 72nd Independent Motorized Rifle Brigade. Yevgeny Prigozhin, a confidant of President Vladimir Putin and the leader of the Wagner Group, orchestrated this capture, underlining the unprecedented nature of this clash during Russia's offensive on Ukraine. Prigozhin, adding fuel to the fire, went public with an interrogation video featuring Venevitin. The officer, visibly distressed and sporting a nasal fracture, confessed to an act of unfriendly fire on a Wagner vehicle. This incident was not merely a result of the fog of war, but an act committed in a state of alcoholic intoxication, underpinned by personal animosity. The unfolding drama, with its layers of treachery and intrigue, offers a grim mirror to the crumbling solidarity within Russia's military ranks. The narrative that emerges from the confession of Venevitan is as startling as it is alarming. According to his testimony, Venevitin, backed by a group of ten, twelve of his soldiers, launched an assault on a Wagner vehicle. Their mission, as the Russian officer claimed, was to disarm the mercenary group's rapid response unit. The Wagner group, commanded by Prigozhin, had faced gunfire not from an adversary, but from a faction within their own national army. The evidence of this discord is manifest in the published document where Prigozhin pointedly identified Venevitin's brigade as the culprits of the hostile assault. This disclosure, while sensational in its own right, shines a harsh spotlight on the deep-seated discord between the Wagner Group and the Russian Defense Ministry. In the harsh light of these revelations, the battle lines are being redrawn, not just on the ground in Ukraine, but within the very heart of the Russian military. The ripple effects of this incident of unfriendly fire are only beginning to be felt, and the repercussions are poised to shake the very foundation of Russia's war effort. The volatile mix of politics, pride and personal grudges is precipitating a potential crisis within the Russian military. This friction became evident in the Wagner Group's retreat from Bakhmut, a city stained with the blood of the longest and most brutal battle in Russia's 15-month-long invasion of Ukraine. The Wagner mercenaries had to fight not only their declared enemies, but also navigate the treacherous terrain mined by their own compatriots. Yevgeny Prigozhin, the irascible leader of the Wagner Group, brought this bitter truth to light. He claimed that pro-Moscow forces, under the command of the Russian Defense Ministry, deliberately planted explosives in the path of the retreating Wagner fighters. Prigozhin's allegations throw into stark relief the simmering tensions within the Russian forces. His accusations pointedly target the Russian Defense Ministry, blaming it for the unnecessary and dangerous explosives that were left behind. In Prigozhin's own words, the charges were not needed to deter the enemy, as they were situated in a rear area, and therefore one can only conclude that they were intended for the advancing units of the Wagner Group. The Wagner leader, who has been vocal in his criticism of Russia's military leadership, didn't mince words as he decried this act as an attempt at a public flogging. This ongoing feud has exposed the widening rift between the Kremlin's allied forces, heralding potentially severe consequences for Russia's counteroffensive in Ukraine. In the grand scheme of the war in Ukraine, these hostilities bear a far deeper significance than a mere battle of egos. The open disputes and counter-accusations within Russia's military ranks do more than tarnish its image. They undermine the solidarity that is crucial for the successful execution of a military campaign. The discord between the Wagner Group and the Russian Defense Ministry, evident in the unfriendly fire incidents, betrays a deeper systemic dysfunction that weakens the integrity of Russia's offensive. Prigozhin's accusations of Russian generals' incompetence and insufficient ammunition supply highlight this brewing crisis. The discord has reached such an extent that it has even pulled in other influential figures, like Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov, a close ally of Putin, into the controversy. As the Russian counteroffensive in Ukraine struggles under the weight of its own internal conflicts, one can't help but wonder what the implications will be for the overall war effort. This bitter feud has the potential to detrimentally affect morale and operational effectiveness among Russian forces, further complicating their tactical prospects. The events at Bakhmut and the incendiary rhetoric between Prigozhin and the Russian Defense Ministry are not just isolated incidents but symptoms of a larger issue that Russia must address. As we watch these developments unfold, the question arises, how will the Kremlin reconcile these internal schisms to maintain a united front? This conflict within a conflict undeniably adds an additional layer of complexity to the already fraught situation in Ukraine. Given these complexities, we turn to our viewers for their perspectives. How do you believe these internal conflicts within Russia's ranks will shape the future trajectory of the war in Ukraine?
Do you foresee these disagreements reaching a point of irreparable damage, or will the Kremlin manage to smoothen over these internal fissures? Share your thoughts and insights in the comments below. Thank you for watching this episode of Warzone. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and we'd recommend watching one of these videos next for more updates.